Some of the big topics that kind of you cover in that book, uh, I want to get into. And one of those is Mick Schumacher and, and the, the cost of his crashes on the team. And, and you put that at about $2 million across the whole season. I, I'm intrigued to know what impact that has on a team like Haas. Uh, it, it has a big impact on a small team, but it also now has an impact, even if it would be a bigger team, because with the cost cap in place, this is money, you cannot develop your car. Because if you can, and then you don't develop your car, your car doesn't go any faster. So everybody gets frustrated. So uh, last year, uh, Haas F1 uh, was very close to the cost cap. We weren't uh, completed uh, there, but uh, uh, the, the two million, it's as simple as this. They just don't go into development, you know, and uh, because you cannot make it up, uh, even even if you are at the, uh, uh, if you got the full budget, uh, if they go away, this is where you spend your money. So it's never very good. So uh, uh, that for it is so frustrating because you can't do anything about it. It's not like, okay, now Gunther has to go and find another $5 million on sponsorship. Even if you find it, you cannot spend it anyway. Which was the which was sort of the final straw in terms of Mick? Was, was it Japan? He had that crash, didn't he, on the in-lap of, of a practice session. Was, was that when you kind of felt like he wasn't the driver that was going to take you further forward? Uh, I think there was a certain frustration when this happens. I get very frustrate, uh, frustrated. I'm very emotional. And uh, uh, I say things I maybe wouldn't say two hours later, to be honest. But when you're sitting there and you know the effort which went in, the effort the people put in, not me. I mean, all the people to make this cars, to make it all happen. And then things like this happen and uh, you get frustrated. But there is not normally there is uh, you get this moment of we need to change something. But then you have to think if I change something, how do I change this into be better for the team. It's, it's no point to make just a, a decision. We finish here and then th th that I think where we started, where I start to really think what do, what, do, what do I need to do to take the team forward from where we are in 2022. 2022 we had a, I, I call it a good, a decent car. Uh, next year, which, which is now 2023, uh, the plan was to have a little bit of a better car. What do we need uh, to get everything out of the car to uh, uh, Every point available, we take it home. And uh, obviously, I came up then uh, getting an experienced driver. But uh, it, it, it is not one moment where you decide this is the moment. It's, it's, it comes over a little bit of time and it just grows in you and say, we need to do something. Mm. And it, it, is that you taking your own responsibility for those crashes? You, you kind of take that yourself? Absolutely. I mean, you have to because the, the, the buck stops with me. You know, and you have to say, OK, this is what we did. I need to fix this. You know, I need to fix this for the team. Like uh, I expect every team member to fix his area he's, uh, he or she is responsible for. What's your relationship like with Mick now? When you see him in the paddock, for example, do you stop, say hello? And is it all very cordial? Uh, I didn't see him this year. Uh, honestly, I, f I think I saw him at uh, testing and I said hello, but afterwards I didn't see him because he's now at the other side of the paddock, you know, where the where, where the champions are and we're on the other side. So I, I didn't run into him in all three races. So uh, I have no problem to say hello. I don't know how he will react, but uh, I think we are all grown up. And uh, uh, in the end, we had uh, two years uh, together. We tried to do something. We gave Mick an opportunity, you know, which uh, uh, we also have to, uh, I think, needs to be respected. Haas F1 took the opportunity and uh, uh, or gave him the opportunity. And, uh, uh, you know, we all need to move on. And uh, uh, Formula One is a, a, a quite a, a small circus, I call it. And, uh, you know, in the end, there's no point to, to fight or not to say hello to anybody. Yeah, I mean, you're getting on a plane with these people, aren't you, on a Wednesday morning? You refer in the book to some of the German media having it in for you. And I'm just intrigued if for you to explain how you think that had an impact on, on Mick and perhaps Mick not being able to get the best out of the car last year. Uh, I, I think there was tried to put pressure on to keep Mick to blame all the team. Uh, 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 and uh, I don't think that was good for Mick, you know, because in the end... Uh, uh, they, they didn't actively try to divide us, but that's what it did, I think, because obviously he, 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 I think he didn't feel good when he heard the, the things talked about me and I didn't feel good uh, coming from their side. So in the end, they, they tried to divide us. And uh, as I always said, this is, uh, this is not good for Mick, even if you try to do this, because in the end, we have the team in the end decides who is going to drive the car, not the driver, which car he's driving. So it's no point uh, uh, to, to, to upset a team about the driver because you want to say uh, uh, Gunther didn't uh, uh, 
take care enough of Mick and, and how I do things. So in the end, he scored points. Nobody says that is because Gunther managed Mick like this. Nobody came with that one. And I don't expect that because like I don't expect to be uh, blamed if he crashes, you know, because the driver has to do that himself to get the points uh, 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 and not to crash. And uh, the, the responsibility with the team is to give the driver the best car they can, you know, and we always did that to be fair to both drivers, that they both get the same level of car. We always did that. And when, if we didn't do that, we explained that, uh, for example, an upgrade, only one part was available and you share it. But we are very open about it. We never hit anything or uh, uh, gave an advantage to one or the other driver because that's a principle of my, of my life. You need to treat people fairly to get the best out of it. Because in the end, who, is, who wants the drivers to perform at their best? Me and the mm. team. So uh, wh wh why would I try to sabotage any of our drivers? So, uh, you know, and, and that was not understood. And uh, in the end, you know, this is part uh, of, 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 of uh, our life, of, of a team principle life, that some people don't like what you're doing. So, I mean, I think people know how I feel about it. I, I don't really care. I mean, if somebody doesn't like what I do, uh, don't, don't just say it, but it doesn't do anything. I will not change, you know, because I don't feel uh, I need to change because of somebody who has uh, uh, no vote in the team. Moving on then to your to your driver lineup for for this year with Kevin and Nico, obviously a much more experienced set of drivers than you had with Nikita and and Mick. Looking back on having two inexperienced drivers in your team, do you would you now say that it's actually a better idea to have at the very least one experienced and one rookie, or would you point to just ha more experience is better within a Formula One team? Uh, 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 I think uh, at least you have to have now, and I learned that lesson as well, but at the time we didn't have a choice, you know. Uh, uh, we took two rookies and uh, we tried to make it work. And obviously now with having had the experience, I can fairly say uh, it was not a good experience. And uh, uh, but, but I'm not blaming the drivers. I'm blaming ourselves for it, you know. I'm not trying to put any blame. It's, it's very difficult with having two rookies. And obviously having two experienced drivers is for a team like ours is the best because we are still the youngest team in Formula One. Uh, and uh, just getting always the advantage of a guy which has done this longer than we are doing it. Nico is driving F1 cars longer than has F1 exists. Think about that one, you know. Mm -hmm. So uh, and, and that was always in the beginning. We started with that one. We had Roman and, 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 and we had Esteban. Esteban did only one year before, but yet one year. And uh, uh, that year was not actually not so bad for him. So, But then we swapped immediately to Kevin, which had already two years in F1 because we always wanted experience. And now... Uh, we, we, we could have a driver which one had five years and one, I don't know how many Nico has got, I think between eight and ten, I don't even know, but more than the team has got. So in the moment, that is the very, we are in a very good position. We are very happy with that because that's what we were looking for, uh, uh, just to give us that experience and to take us forward. And again, we cannot blame the other drivers for it. We knew when we took them on that they don't have the experience. You know, we have nobody else than us to blame that we make that decision. So, uh, and uh, experience, to make experience just takes time. And in Formula One, you haven't got a lot of time. 